Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to the Card Closet for another episode. I'm glad you're here, and thanks for joining me again. Tonight's video is going to be a video response to a contest being held by Near Mint Musings. Brent over there is having a 100 subscriber contest. And if for some reason you haven't heard of Near Mint Musings channel, go check it out. It is one of my favorites. He's a diehard Twins fan, Harmon Kilbrew fan. He likes the Mariners a little bit too. And he likes to tell stories with his presentation. So if you like storytelling, Brent's a good one. One of my favorites, like I said. So for his 100 subscriber contest, he's asking us to show a player that we player collect and to give the story why. So I, I do have a couple player collections. I decided to go a little bit of an alternate route and pick one of the more obscure players that I collect. And that would be Morris Berg, otherwise known as Mo Berg. Mo Berg played professional baseball in the 20s and 30s. He was with my favorite team, the Red Sox, from 1935 until 1939. He was the second or third string catcher his entire career. There were a couple of stints where, due to some injuries, he went on a spree of starting games. But for the most part, he was second and third string catcher, not a great player, not a great hitter. Over those 15 major league seasons, he averaged 44 games played a year, hit six home runs in 15 years, batting average of, I believe, 243. So not a stellar player by any means, but the kind of guy you always wanted on your team. So I'm reading this book right now called The Catcher Was a Spy, which is about the life of Mo Berg. With all due respect to the bearded guy on the Dasakis commercial, I must say Mo Berg is the most interesting man in the world. If you want a good read, read this book. I'm about two-thirds of the way through it. It is fantastic. The first third of the book is about his playing career, and the second third, which is about what I'm through, is about his life as a spy. And I mean a spy. So this, he actually went into the OSS after he retired from baseball, which was the precursor of the CIA, I believe. He was in northern Africa for a while, and then he was in Europe for a while as a spy, undercover, trying to figure out the secrets of whether the Nazis had an atomic bomb or not. There was a bombs ra a, an atomic war race going on in the early 40s to mid 40s, and his job was to travel around Europe undercover and to figure out where the Germans were at with their bomb, and if, we, if they were further along than we were. First one there wins the war, was the thought of the day. So Mo, Mo Berg, I like collecting him because he's just an interesting, mysterious, like the book says, fellow. He, he was high IQ, very strange, very aloof. Nobody in his life ever really got to know him. He would disappear after ball games, and nobody would see him until the next day, right before the ball game again. He loved the baseball life. Not so much for the baseball. He often would try to get out of playing. But he loved the travel and he loved the culture that he gained by traveling to all these different places. And he was eccentric in many, many ways. He read the newspaper every day and he wouldn't do anything until he read the paper. In fact, he read six newspapers every day. He spoke six or seven different languages, very, very fluently. And when he was in Europe, he would read their newspapers in their native languages. That's one reason he was able to be such a good spy, was his 
linguistics was so strong that he could blend into a country without an accent and nobody would know that he was actually a foreigner. Probably a couple stories about him from the book that are my favorites. So in 1934, Major League Baseball sent an all-star team to Japan to do a 17-game exhibition tour across Japan and spread the word of baseball, kind of a goodwill tour to spread the, the, the game of baseball to Japan. And as we all know, Japan, very baseball is very big there now, and this tour actually was very successful. So this all-star team included the likes of Lou Gehrig, Hank Greenberg, Lefty Grove, Charlie Geringer, Babe Ruth, Earl Averill, that caliber of player. But for the catcher, Mo Berg, second or third string catcher for the Washington Senators at the time. So why in the world was Mo Berg on that all-star team? We may never know. But we do know that while he was there, he would oftentimes disappear for a day or two at a time, and the team never knew where he was in Tokyo. We do know that on one particular day, he he brought a video camera, camera along with him, and there's actually a picture of him in the book with the video camera. And he went to... He would videotape anything he could. And when he was in Japan, the daughter of the United States ambassador to Japan had a baby and was in the hospital in the middle of Tokyo on a very high place in town. And he skipped the ball game that day and decided that he was going to go and uh, visit her. Well, he didn't know her. Uh, in fact, he didn't even visit her. He went to the front desk of the hospital, told them, you know, in his Japanese, he spoke Japanese very well. He said he was here to see Mrs. Lyon, I believe her name was. And he had a big bouquet of flowers with him. So they told him the room number she was in, and he took the elevator. Didn't stop at the floor she was on. He went to the top floor, went to the end of the hallway on the top floor, and you get the impression it's maybe a six or seven story building. He climbs out a window onto a terrace, up onto the roof, and he videos a 360 degree panoramic video of Tokyo, focusing on infrastructure type things like military uh, installments, machinery, factories, things of that nature. That video, a few years later, was used by the United States Armed Forces in planning the Doolittle Raids on Tokyo uh, in the early 40s. So it's, very, it's highly suspicious why he was on that all-star team to Tokyo, was to actually do a little spying already as a player. And then the other story that I find really interesting about this guy he was assigned, like I said, to determine if the Germans were ahead of us in the race to get an atomic bomb. So there, the top physicist in Germany was a gentleman named Werner Heisenberg. And if you're like me and you had to take physics somewhere along the line, you heard about Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. It's the same guy. Well, they they weren't they could not get into Germany to visit him because he was under such close guard as he was trying to put together the bomb for Germany, for the Nazis. So they convinced him to come to Zurich, Switzerland, to a conference on physics. And they invited Heisenberg to be one of the big speakers there. And once they convinced him to come out of Germany to this conference, Moberg was sent, he, he was stationed in Italy at the time, he was sent to go there, befriend Heisenberg, attend the conference, and if he determined that Germany was close to getting an atomic bomb, he was to shoot Heisenberg on the spot and then swallow a cyanide pill himself. 
So to accomplish this, Moberg taught himself nuclear physics. Yeah, he, in two months, he taught himself nuclear physics to the point where he could actually have a conversation with Heisenberg about it, and Heisenberg was not able to tell that he was an amateur. After the lecture, there was a, a get-together of all the big physicists and the sponsors. Mo Berg, of course, was invited. This was all preordained. He befriended Heisenberg at this gala, and afterwards, late at night, said to Heisenberg, I'll, I'll walk back to your hotel with you. And it was on the dark streets after midnight that he determined from Heisenberg that the Germans were not very close to having a bomb. He talks about how he had his pistol ready uh, to shoot him on the spot in the middle of the night there. Uh, had He found out that Heisenberg was close to getting a bomb for Nazi Germany. These are just a couple of some very, very interesting stories. You know, Moberg... Uh, like I said, not a great ball player, but he has a Red Sox connection. He's a very interesting man. I can't even begin to tell you all the other stories that are in this book about him. So if you want a good read, read The Catcher Was a Spy, or go to the Saber Bio Project on BaseballReference.com. You can read about him on there, too. They have some abbreviated versions. But uh, anyway, because he's such an interesting dude... I'm player collecting him. So I have a 1939 play ball of Moberg, a 1940 play ball of Moberg, and a 1991 Conlon of Moberg. There are only about 10 cards from Moberg's playing days in existence. I'm only after the ones where he's on the Red Sox. So the only one I'm missing is a 1936 National Chickle. So I'm hoping to hoping to get that one someday, eventually. And also a 1995 Conlon would also be nice. You know, by the way, if you haven't noticed, this is the card in the book. So congratulations, Brent, on 100 subscribers. You got a great channel. Keep it up. This was my player collection of Mo Berg. Take care, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Bye.